She Wolf. This is a story my mom tells. When she was a young girl, her family used to move throughout northwestern New Mexico from ranch to ranch, most of which were out on the reservation in the middle of nowhere, her father taking work where he could get it. When she was about 11, the family living in this small house with basic electricity and running water, one night after she had gone to bed, she was awakened by the ranch dogs barking. While not an odd occurrence in itself, this time the intensity is more than usual. She says she opens her eyes and staring there into the darkness, she makes out this black against black figure standing over her right there beside her bed. Its outline is just barely visible in the moonlight from outside her window. She says that she is so scared that her only thought is to get up and run to her parents' room. But as soon as she tries to move, moon dust, that's what she thought it was back then, starts drifting down over her like gently falling snow. She remembers wanting to cover her face, but she finds she can't move. So she just lays there, scared and wanting to cry, but she can't. Soon, she's not sure how long the shadowy figure disappears. Once it is gone, she is able to move again. She gets up and runs to her brother's room, which is right next to hers. She wakes up her biggest brother and tells him she's scared and doesn't want to go back to her room. To make her happy and so that she could go back to bed, he goes outside to the house and checks around. He doesn't find anything, but when he looks outside his sister's window, he sees what looks like dog tracks, the rear paw prints only. They lead from her window off into the fields and then just stop in the middle of nowhere. So the next night, her two brothers camp out on top of this shade house next to the tree line to see if they can catch what they believe is a brazen coyote or two. Shortly after midnight, they are shaken from their sleep again by the dogs barking. Looking down from the house top, they see this thing, some sort of creature, hopping out in the fields. It is way too big to be a rabbit and it is moving steadily towards the house. The big brother has a 22 rifle used for hunting small game. He waits for the creature to hop up again and when it does, he fires. Though at the time, he isn't sure or he is sure that he hits it. It lets out a high-pitched scream like a woman, then takes off running back into the reservation. The next morning, the two boys tell their parents and sister, my mother, their story. Later that same afternoon, the ranch boss drives off to pick up this woman he is seen to bring her back into his place on the ranch for supper. My mother remembers her 
as a little creepy and with a sort of stale smell about her. That evening, after they've eaten, the two of them go for a walk. The ranch boss puts his arm around her shoulder and she winces as if in pain. When he inquires as to her well-being, she lowers the shoulder of her dress a tad and he sees there's a bandage covering the area beneath the nape of her neck and to the right shoulder. When he asks her what happened, she tells him one of the tools hanging in the barn had fallen on her and cut her pretty good. When she asks if she would like to have a look at it, she becomes somewhat curt with him, assuring him there's nothing to it. He, however, gets the feeling she's hiding something, but doesn't pursue the matter. From what my mom says, the two of them stop dating shortly after. As far as she knows, the woman is still alive to this day. Supposedly, she lives in a Hogan with no windows somewhere out in the canyon by itself, near some trees and a wash. No one goes there. My mother thinks it's curious after she's still alive after all these years, saying if she's not a hundred years old, she's real close.